What do the data say about this relationship between democracy or polyarchy and the competitiveness of an international financial center? Figure 4 from our paper shows the seeming relationship between the extent of democracy and the competitiveness of an international financial center. These data show the international financial centers they rank as contender, specialist, diversified, or leader jurisdictions, in contrast with the Economist Intelligence Unit's categorization of political systems' extent of democracy. We see these same jurisdictions ranked as authoritarian, hybrid, flawed, or full. The overall trend of these data seems to suggest that full democracies tend to have a leadership advantage in competing internationally for assets under management, and we see a gentle sloping gradient away from these full democracies and their leadership position toward authoritarian regimes which only have contender status or are not even ranked necessarily in any positive categorization of these international financial centers. Indeed, some data such as that shown in figure 6 tend to point toward the advantages that autocratic rule or at least less widely held democratic participation has in promoting the competitiveness of an international financial center. In this figure, we see the risk or probability of having a better international financial center. We see that amongst those most democratic jurisdictions, they have a lower risk of being a more competitive international financial center, whereas in those jurisdictions that rank poorly on this democracy variable, such as those jurisdictions that are ranked in the bottom half of all countries, their having lower democratic participation tends to coincide with their improved risk or probability of having a more competitive international financial center. These data foreshadow the extent to which reductions in democracy, and later as we'll describe polyarchy, coincide with a financial center's competitiveness. Let's look at some more nuanced data now, showing how democracy correlates with success for some jurisdictions, but not for others. Figure 9 shows, for various jurisdictions, the correlation between polyarchy and this international financial center's competitiveness. So, for example, for Singapore and New York, we find in the data that when these jurisdictions became more democratic, they also became more competitive. On the other end of the spectrum, we see that for jurisdictions such as Stockholm, Frankfurt, Budapest, these jurisdictions that saw increasing amounts of polyarchy, their competitiveness as international financial centers actually fell. So we cannot say that there's a one-way directional trend toward democracy and increasing international financial center competitiveness. And we see this data against the background of an unfavorable policy stance toward democracy over the last 10 years or so. Figure 18c shows the correlation between IFC competitiveness and polyarchy, and what we see is that generally this correlation has decreased over the years. Namely, that democracy has had less and less of an effect at improving an international financial center's competitiveness than it has previously. Looking at other trends in these data, we see that, well, not only has democracy been less useful in helping international financial centers become more competitive, but the very nature of that international network has changed over time. So if we see on the left-hand side of figure 18D that the international financial center network was less complex with fewer key nodes in that network, Ten years later, we saw a very different network, with a lot more key international financial centers sitting at the center of this global network. We see much denser financial relationships between these financial centers, and in general, we see much more variety in the political systems of these centers. Figure 18E, in fact, repeats this overall analysis, showing how polyarchy has had fewer benefits for an international financial center looking to become more competitive. Instead of showing the correlation over time, this figure shows the value of such polyarchy in millions of dollars that the financial institutions in this jurisdiction have been able to attract from abroad. And so we see that over time, 
in millions of dollars. Polyarchy's impact on these financial flows has decreased from almost $20 million to less than $15 million. The figures in the black box show the dispersion of financial transactions between a jurisdiction and its partners. So we can interpret these data roughly as the bigger these percentages are, the more diverse a jurisdiction's financial partners are. These data show that over the decade, the dispersion or the difference in these international financial centers has decreased in terms of the amounts of money that these international financial centers have been able to attract. Thus, we see international financial centers becoming more similar, and we see the power of their polyarchy and any increase in democracy that these political institutions have built in over time. We see a decreasing value to these institutions over time. Yet we know that the traditional ways of analyzing these phenomena simply don't work. Figure 38a shows the results of a traditional regression. Usually, the way academics try to answer questions like this, they put the amount of money that a jurisdiction wants to attract on the left-hand side of an equation, they put the extent of democracy or polyarchy on the right-hand side of the equation, and they see, well, how much does democracy influence the amount of money that a jurisdiction is able to attract? And if we try and do this using conventional regression means, we see that the parameter values fluctuate wildly. Democracy can have a positive or negative impact on money a financial center is able to attract, and that we can't sort out, well, when is democracy good for a financial center or bad for a financial center from these typical ways of handling data. A more refined technique, which economists call vector autoregression, has similar problems. Our figure 40 shows the results of this type of autoregression on polyarchy and the centrality of a financial center in the international network. So what we do in this analysis is we, we look at its effect on that jurisdiction centrality in the network of international financial centers. We also look at the extent to which a jurisdiction's success in the past has helped it remain a financial center in the future. This type of analysis simply parrots history. In other words, we've seen decreasing polyarchy over time, and it's no surprise that this analysis points to further decreases in polyarchy, Diagon centrality over time for all jurisdictions, which is both empirically not true, as we already saw, and just pragmatically not true because policymakers can do almost whatever they want. These data clearly point to the need to analyze these data much better, and we discuss this much better analysis in the next section.